Nice. Nice. Welcome to Remember Me Part 3. Uh, I'm going to break this one into two parts uh, for Episode 3 because it gets quite long and I'm doing quite a high bitrate upload for the nerds among you, which makes the video files ridiculously large. Anyway, this is Episode 3. As you can see, high tension, deep exit. Uh, the last mission was Macrowave. Oh, we started off, I got, uh, I switched out some combos a little bit, but I think we're on the look for Johnny Greenfingers, or some such, um, to get, I don't know, something in order to break in somewhere. The story is a bit, there's Edge, but we're going to cut him. So, carrying on this way, uh, there's a sap patch kicking around here somewhere, there you'll see, i am just run past it open that and then down here there we go see there's the sign for the sat patch and it's actually right by that poster where I just was uh, but as always I will link the collectibles playlist in the description if you just want to play through for that I need to get those videos up as well so I've been out of um, action uploading videos since I've come back from holiday just because I've got a new job which is taking up quite a lot of time and there's a scarab Scaramix, I forget. Uh, and I still need to play Borderlands 2. So what I'm going to try and do is, no promises, as always, is try and get the Remember Me playthrough done, and the Swapper playthrough done, and start on Tiny Tina's Borderlands 2 stuff by the weekend. Uh, there is a Nessus, I just walked past there on the right, in the book, book, book store. And there is another Sap Patch, or maybe a Focus Boost, I forget. I can't remember the same. I don't think I find this one. Maybe I do. It's not around here. Come on, look for the flames. No, Nilin. There are the flames down there. And this one's quite sneaky because you get down here and then it starts a fight. And by the time the fight is over, you may have forgotten that you saw that thing at all. Anyway, there is a new combo available uh, there. So I put uh, heal, cooldown, damage, heal, damage on it. And you can see it does 220 damage, 23 regeneration, and 12 cooldown. Uh, but my focus gauge is way down at the moment. Uh, my fighting is also pretty miserable at this point. <laughs> dodgy McGee. Not Dodgy McGee. And my timing is all kinds of off here. And in fact, I think a three, if you have three strength things at the end of the six hit combo, um, it pretty much kills those guys. Uh, there's no sap patch in there, then. No, where is it? There it is! Sap patch, yay! And that's five, so I get another health chunk. I think we're a couple behind uh, the max at the moment. Org eye. Now, this you'll see up here. This is a pretty cool sort of robot graveyard. Um, well, not really graveyard, robot workshop. Uh, but basically, outside there, there's a little switch to, thing, uh, to shoot with the spammer. And I didn't notice it for the longest time. So I spent the best part of it, about eight minutes running back and forth there trying to work out what I'd missed. And then this bit, I just thought, you know, you can hear the background. This bit is, I guess, the red light district of Neo Paris. And I think we've already discussed how ridiculous it is to call new cities Neo something. Um, utterly pointless. And this fight's a bit annoying. It took me a few cracks at it. Uh, it's got one of those um, power-up dudes. Skinners? I think, uh, let's call them Skinners. Uh, and then these prowlers see on the wall. And the reason this fight's annoying is because every time you die, you have to sit through that bit of training information again. Shoot the prowlers on the wall. Use the right stick to change target. Press SB to shoot. Um, and you got to wait. You can't even like just click, click, click through it. There's a two-second delay before the next button comes up, which is just the UX designer that this need to be taken aside and quietly talked to. Um, so yeah, you can see here I'm just trying to build up that focus gauge and now it's there. I should really have activated it to take out the Skinner. There we go. Wabam! So bye bye Mr. Skinner. So he's down. Uh, and then I think there's just one guy left. Uh, 
points in the end it didn't turn out too badly and I've sped that up because really fighting those guys isn't that much fun now this one's quite a tricky one to find um, you need to there you go this shoot that and then you climb up here there's two of them yeah. And there's a few of these kind of sneakier things to find. I don't find it on this one. I had to go back and look for it. But when you are here, instead of dropping down, you go to the left. Um, and there's a whole secret area over there where you can find extra stuff. Nothing there. And there's Edge. Go away, Edge. He's wittering on about Johnny Greenleaves, or whatever his name is. Or have we found Johnny Greenleaves? Was that the previous mission? It was, wasn't it? Now we are looking for... Oh, um, I don't know, someone else. <laughs> Honestly. It's just... Oh, we're heading back to the um, Leaky Brain, right? The Leaking Brain pub. Is that right? Yeah, let's pretend that's right. There we go, I cut there, because again, I think I jumped off the side or something stupid. Brain pain! Yeah, we are, we're heading back to the Leaky Brain. We fought Johnny Greenfingers in the last battle. Johnny Greengrass, Johnny Greenfingers, whatever his name was. Ah, there we go. And there's a couple of dudes on the wall that I really should be thinking about shooting, but I don't. So I've sped this bit up because, you know, not that interesting. I don't think anything in particular import happens here. There we go, and then, uh, using the S-Press and Fury. Here we go, so these are chain pressants. What they do is multiply the effect of the previous pressant. And it's very rare and very powerful, despite the fact there's seven of them just like all the others. Um, so, yeah, you know, there's that. Um, I guess they unlock a lot later, though. So that is actually quite true. Actually, way later. But you can see here, my damage previously went from like 220, now it's up to 480 with a couple of chains on the back end. Um, so I think probably on like the second hit of the combo I'm basically killing these guys pretty much outright. You can see that that was quite fun. If you get a kick in the combo, which is with the Y button, you tend to hit the group around you. And there we are, just got charged by that fella. Silly skinners. Again, I should have been uh, shooting, really. But, you know. Oh, there we go. Now they've jumped off the walls. That's obviously the right time to shoot. So that was done pretty badly. Uh, and I think I unlocked heal here, and then, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Yeah, heal. And I don't know that I put it into anything. And I think we've discussed this before as well, but the best way to play this is to have very specific presents, right? To have one for cooldown, one for healing, and one for just all-out damage. Um, and then by the time you unlock four, you can have one that you know has a bit of healing and a bit of uh, cooldown at the front end. But ultimately, nothing over there, villain. Ultimately, um, yeah, you're going to find that the majority of the damage you're doing later game is based on the presses, uh, the special moves. There's Tommy. Hello, Tommy. It's based on the special moves. So actually, you're just going to be you're going to be doing damage to build up your gauge. Um, and dodges, and then all you're going to be wanting to do is cool down as quickly as possible. Because some of these things have like a two, three hundred second cooldown. Um, so you really need to use those cooldown attacks. Uh, there's a Scaramech over there, you may have just glimpsed it underneath that thing, that ledge that I just lifted, but uh, I didn't shoot it there. We'll get it in the collectibles. And now we get to invisible creatures, which are a right royal pain. And you see, you need to switch on lights to reveal them. There we go. So apologies for this being so dark, but it's actually intentional as part of the game. Oh, look, I'm going completely the wrong way. And uh, a lot of this is down to me just not really following the story and also not really paying attention to my surroundings. So I kind of, you know, get a cutscene and then forget which way I've already been because I don't recognise anything. Ah, uh, anyway. Look, yes, there's an arrow pointing up. That's what you need to climb on. 
sorry, I just had to uh, take a little break there because <laughs> I just suddenly cut into the middle of the previous level. I don't know what happened. I got very confused with the source files I was supposed to be using. Uh, so I've just spent ten minutes recutting it. That was fun. Um, anyway, the, uh, we've mentioned these invisible guys, and the way that you fight them is to flick a light on there. So you use the spammer on the floodlight there. We've had training in the corridors on the way here, and suddenly they're revealed. Uh, eventually the floodlight will go out. You'll see here in a second it's about to go. There we go. So then you just got to get the floodlight thing back in view. That's it, like that. And... Um, then when it's on, they'll be revealed. And here's Tommy. And then there's some running around here before I realise that that's the way to go. So then over here, and there is a med pack thing there in the corner. Which somehow, using the power of magic sensen, uh, just heals you. And they're free. I quite like the idea of just free healthcare for everyone as a machine in the street. Uh, that is an electrified great... Um, what you don't see is the six minutes I cut out. Literally six minutes of me just on the grate trying to work out how to get up and getting electrocuted and falling off. And then one time it worked. I don't know, it was still it appeared to be electrocuted. That was a bit of a weird one. Oh, and we've got another kind of classic video game moment. She falls. She's got a sore leg. Oh, God, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to walk on it. It's absolutely fine. What a pointless cutscene. Uh, so there's these things here. Uh, these crates, if you shoot these, these little bars up here, uh, there's a nessist there on that table that I missed. Uh, but you see that bar that I'm climbing up there. And again, I mean, look, it's a beautiful world. It really is gorgeous. Uh, there's obviously some sort of construction district. And then opening this door, there's a couple of little leapers inside. Hello, leapers, but they're invisibles. So there's a floodlight over there that I flick on, and then it's just rinse and repeat as before. Not too much to see or do here, so we'll speed it up. Um, yeah, just balancing, flicking that floodlight. And the problem is, every time you go for the floodlight, you suddenly get a big mark above the back of your head. So you need to be a little bit uh, by a big mark above the back of your head. I don't mean a sensor. I mean someone, one of the invisible guys, tries to attack you when you switch the floodlights on, which I guess loosely makes sense. But still, it's a bit annoying. The cool thing is, if you're mid-combo and the light goes off, you'll actually be able to continue punching them. Um, and complete that combo, so that's nice. Anyway, now they've ruined the floodlight. Um, they've destroyed it. So we've got a new uh, Espressen. Sensen Dos. Sensen Denial of Service. So what this does is shuts down all the Sensen in the area, except yours and uh, conveniently and a couple of guys later on, um, a bit later. But these are, there are only two invisible guys here, and you can see now my chain attack. Pretty much kills them after five hits. And that's actually not desirable. You want to be doing a six hit so that you get the bonus PMP experience. Because uh, by only doing five, I think I'm only getting. Um, well, I'm not getting any, am I? So yeah, you would definitely want to be doing uh, six. Anyway. There we go. There's another guy dead. And I think that's it. Then again, there was a lot of running around here. I ran right up to that thing, I thought, a few times and never saw a button. But then this time I just go back. Uh, and there was five or six minutes of just wasted time trying to work out what to do next. Uh, but that lowers this platform. And you can climb up here off this thing at the back here. And then there's a bit of a leap there. And okay. what you've got here uh, is. is what can very lightly be called a puzzle. You'll see I click those and it rotates them. There. So uh, now it'll, it's bottom and right. Now it's bottom and left. If you go look again, it'll be left and top. Um, but to save you the time of going through all those, you'll see there, you've basically made like a little uh, path that you can climb up. So climb up there to the right, up there to the left. There we go, up there and to the left again. And then onto that ladder. And then through here. And we're pretty much now at the leaky brain, I think. Are we? No. <laughs> I lied. Uh, there's another pickup hidden down here somewhere. I forget exactly where, but it's one of those sneaky cheeky back jumps. I think that was maybe it there. And then shoot that and pass through the turbine gap. There. And more nonsense with, um, what's his name? McDingleberry. Tommy. I'll see you soon, Nilin. Come back to the leaking brain. We've got problems. 
So there is another sap patch in there. Somewhere? I don't know, I don't think I found it this time. Um, I think you need to get it before you fight or while you're fighting or before a cutscene kicks in. Anyway, that is the leaking brain. Uh, we will wrap up here because that's about 15 minutes, so it's as good a finish as any. The next video is going to be about 12, but we'll uh, be defending the leaking brain with Tommy on the left, episode 2. On the right, episode 3, part 2, uh, at the top of the playlist, and always check the description for links to the collectibles. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!